welcome. Uh, it's lovely to see all your faces. I've got you all on gallery view, which is the setting where you can see everybody, which is lovely. So if you can just see one big picture of me and you'd like to see everybody else, you can change the setting in the top right hand corner. So you can see everybody or you can have just the person speaking and some small boxes with everybody else. So uh, yeah, welcome to this webinar, releasing the pressure of being productive. So I'm Katie um, and along with Met the dog who's asleep there on the settee <laughs> and, and Maria who's over in Spain. We make up Amity and we're delighted to be um, hosting this alongside Gabriela Maldonado Mantano. So I'll do um, a formal introduction of Gabriela. She's, she has a bio and I think it, it does her justice so I'm actually going to read it. It's better than anything I think I could improvise. So to, to share a little about Gabriela. Gabriela Maldonado Mantano has dedicated her entire professional life to help her clients discover their well-being and natural genius that resides at the centre of human beings. So in over two decades of sharing the fundamental laws that create the human experience, she's worked individually and in groups, and I'm letting Shelley and Kira back in. Um, so she's worked individually and in groups across many settings, including education, alcohol and drug recovery, youth and adult incarceration, community development, burnout prevention, and executive coaching. Seeing her clients blossom regardless of their particular circumstances, culture, gender, or age, inspires her to continue her work in English and in Spanish across this awesome world. And, um, Yes, yeah, so and Maria and I with Amity also share our understanding of um, the fundamental laws that create the human experience. And we do that in a variety of contexts. So health and social care, homelessness, uh, community development. And we design and deliver programs, both short and long, in which we do that sharing and support people um, into inspired action. So yeah, we can also welcome Kira to the call. Hi, Kira. I think you're muted, but hello. <laughs> and Shelly. Shelly. I can't see Shelly. I can't see Shelly. Hi. Hi, Shelly. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. Good. Thank you. Welcome. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> That's okay. We've just done some introductions to myself, Maria and Gabriella, who are hosting this webinar. So Kira's typed hello on the group chat. So you'll all have a group chat down at the bottom that mm -hmm. might pop up from people who want to, to say hello in that way. Hi, Naomi. <laughs> so I'm gonna hand over Gabriella to you to kick off, if that's all right. Sure, sure. Um, I just want to remind you that this is being recorded. <clears throat> we are hoping to make this public. So if there is something that um, you feel sensitive about sharing, just be a little mindful of that. If you absolutely say something and you're like, you know, I really don't want that to be shared with the world, we'll try to edit it out. But that's a little bit more challenging. <laughs> it always lands on Maria to do that. So you know, just be a little mindful of that. Um, <clears throat> if I don't mind, if you don't mind, I would like to begin with a story that really illustrates how we can create pressure for ourselves. So, <clears throat> you know, because we humans are so social. Um, and I live in a court. My neighbors and I have decided to meet every Sunday uh, keeping, you know, the two meters. And so we create a circle with chairs and there's like two meters between people. And I was sitting next to one of my neighbors <clears throat> and I asked her, Hey, you know, how are you doing? And she says, well, I'm making masks. 
I'm like, oh, that's really great. She goes, yes, I order um, vacuum cleaner bags and material, and I am going to make 2,000 masks. And it's really quite clever the way she's done it because you can insert uh, a part of the bag, the, the vacuum cleaner bag, this particular brand that's you know supposed to be really good. So you insert it in the middle and then it opens up and then it closes and she's telling me all of this. <clears throat> and as she's telling me all of this, at first I was like, oh, that's really beautiful. And then all of a sudden, my mind starts going to, hmm, you have a sewing machine too. Maybe you should make masks too. Wow, you know, she really spent a lot of money buying this whole thing. and You have not spent any money. And all of a sudden, her story about having these beautiful masks made for people was no longer her story. It was me in the middle of the story thinking of really how I was not contributing in the same way. And for the next few days, I felt this heaviness, you know, around because then there's other people. There's actually a project that's uh, here in the States that's um, committed themselves to making a million masks, right? And so there are all these ladies with all these sewing machines <laughs> and they're sewing. And in the back of my mind, it's like, gosh, you're not making any masks. You really should be making masks. People need masks, you know, the same way that, you know, this person was helping. And there sat my, my, uh, my sewing machine. So it was really interesting, right? Because I had the sewing machine and then I had this beautiful neighbor doing her project. And then I was just feeling pressure, 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 right? And then of course there are people that are writing books. Do you know there are, <laughs> there are people that are remodeling? There are people that are, I mean, you know, just incredible projects. And I'm not on uh, social media a lot, but you know, you just hear there is, there are, you know, this uh, people that are documenting all the stuff. And, and I started to feel a little bit like, hmm, is really, is, is my worth the same? I was almost like gauging my word, worth as a person, directly to the fact that I was not making masks. And this could be like directly to the fact that maybe you're not learning a language or that you're not writing a book or that you're not cleaning, right? And there are so many people right now that are doing so many beautiful things. But I think also there are many people that we're starting to feel this sense of how come we're not producing as much as other people. And the interesting part about that is that it's not only like, well, we're not producing uh, as much as other people, but what does that mean about us? How come we are not producing as much? And so in conversation and in preparation for this um, webinar, one of the things that came to the surface was how we have a tendency to really uh, connect producing to our value as human beings, you know? Uh, and it's really subtle, but it's very ingrained in our cultures because this is what we have learned to do you know, from very early on, from school. This is like, you know, if you get good grades, then you are a good girl and, you know, or a good boy, Sam. Uh, and if you don't, then you're not as good. And so the first idea that we want to share with you, that we want to talk about, is the idea that we have really misunderstood where our worth really comes from. 
okay? We have a sense, most of us sometimes, we have a sense that our worth is often linked to our achievements, it's often linked to our accomplishments, it's often linked to how many masks we make, how many masks we sew. And it's pervasive, that belief. So we want to present an idea to you that goes beyond how good of a human being we are, or you are, or I am, regardless of what we do or what we don't do. Okay? So we know that the whole world is guided or it, it tends to, um, to move us in the direction that our worth as human beings are based or is based on what we accomplish. You know, I was listening, I was listening to a YouTube thing and they were saying, you have no excuse, right? If you are not doing this or that, it's because you are not even, not, you're not either uh, driven enough or you're not um, focused enough or you're not whatever. And so in that path, with that life, with that message, no wonder we get so confused, right? But what if the value that we have, our worth, had really nothing to do with what we're doing, that there is an inherent value, that there is an inherent worth, regardless of whether we sew masks or not? What if we could be sitting down, taking care of ourselves, drinking tea, not producing, and still be perfectly worthwhile? And that doesn't take away, obviously, from the person that's sewing masks, because, you know, that came to them. But would the pressure that we feel to produce be lifted or would be experienced differently if we knew that it had nothing to do with our worth and our value as human beings? So I would love to listen what your opinions are about this question. So the question is, would the pressure producing be changed or lifted in any way if we realized that our value and our worth as human beings has nothing to do with what we produce? And, you know, if you have any incline, if you have any incline about this, or if you're confused about anything that I've said so far, or if any of this is resonating to you, you know, you're welcome to jump in. But I really would like to, um, to hear what that, you know, how that experience of producing and feeling pressure, how would that be, uh, or would it be altered in any way, you think? I just have a comment. Um, I think it's a very strong conditioning that has been passed down from generations before us because um, at least in Sweden, most of the people were farmers and you were you were never allowed to sit and do nothing you always even the youngest or the oldest everyone had to do something with their hands it it was 
was actually people not working. It was breaking the law. They were taken by the police and putting somewhere there when, where they would work. So I think it's really been a strong conditioning passed through just two generations back. I could see my grandfather had that in him, very strong sense of duty and you have to be productive. Otherwise you're worth, you're more or less breaking the law. Yeah. Yes. Uh, could I build on Maria? What Maria said, it's Naomi. Um, interestingly, you made me think about when I worked in mental health and there was a thing called occupational therapy but it wasn't occupational therapy. It was, it was for people to be working because it was seen as a thing that helped mental health or it always has been a thing that helped mental health. But actually a lot of that was things like packing and uh, production line work. And it wasn't, um, it wasn't a pleasant experience. I didn't like to have to work in that area because it felt like a factory farm. So strangely, I'm wondering whether that, was built on those foundations of, of uh, expectation of the culture that you know you have to do something to be a member of society even if you're unwell. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you guys, thank you. Anybody else? I think Katie's gonna go. Yeah, hi guys. Um, yeah, it's interesting because I suppose we take away our productivity um, or what it is that we produce and we're left with whatever we believe our inherent worth is. So I think this has been a real, real eye opener for me. I mean, I'm, um, I've sort of inherited lots of Catholic guilt from my mum. I'm not religious myself, but she was brought up, she went to like a convent school and she, um, she never sits still. She's constantly doing and helping other people. Um, so I, I've always felt a lot of guilt if I feel like I'm being lazy or sitting around doing something that doesn't have real value. And that'll include reading books um unless i'm reading something that's i think is really educational and i would feel guilt sitting around reading novels and that kind of thing so um i think what what i'm finding quite difficult is part of me feels like it's really important that i learn to be okay with the fact that i'm that my levels of productivity are low at the moment um and then there's another part of me that feels like, well, I feel better when I'm productive. And on the days when I actually get up and do something that I can tick off a list, I feel better because I have that sense of achievement. So I'm sort of torn as to whether I should. And today I decided, well, last night I decided that today would be a productive day and I would actually give myself quite a strict timetable mm -hmm. in the hope that by the end of the day, I would feel better than I have on the days when I've drifted um, and I do feel better for having done that. So it's tricky to sort of, how much do you challenge that? How uncomfortable do you get? Um, and as you say, if you feel like, well, I could be actually helping people or doing something to further my career or whatever. Um, yeah, so I'm a bit torn at the moment. I'm so glad that you said that, Haley, because the only thing that we're saying, but it is a huge paradigm shift. I mean, you know, based upon what Mary said and Naomi and what you're saying, it is, I think it's an enormous jump that we recognize that. Um, and then there are two more points that are super excited uh, to share with you, actually, Katie and Maria are going to be sharing it. So this is just the beginning, okay? So the only thing we're saying is this, this is the only little step, but it's enormous, is we recognize that humans like to be productive. I mean, our, from the very beginning of our lives, you know, we're learning, okay? The only thing we're saying is this, what if we had a great sense of worth in spite of? 
right? So not that <laughs> we're not recommending that you should sit 24 hours a day watching TV, or if you wanna watch TV, that's fine. The only thing we're saying is, could we unlink value, our value, our worth, from what we're doing? That's the, that's the only thing we're saying. Amy, were you gonna say something? I think you were gonna say something or no? Um, well, I wasn't really, but I was thinking about it. I don't know if you read my mind. <laughs> um, I actually kind of feel the opposite in a way. Like, um, I've come to a point where uh, I'm quite adamant that I don't have to prove uh, that me not doing anything is okay. And uh, like, I, I really don't feel guilty about it because it's such a unique time. Mm. I'm probably never going to have this opportunity again. I'm really lucky that I don't have to do anything. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I don't even get defensive when like my partner might say, oh, but you could be doing this. You should be, you could do some courses or, and I'm like, but I don't want to like, I'm just, I'm, I'm, for me at the moment, it's just like, I'm happy to get through the day and like to, to feel a sense of normality. And for me, that's quite amazing to like, to be able to adapt to this situation just shows how, uh, well, how kind of amazing we are that we can like, I mean, I wouldn't enjoy it, but if you said to me, okay, you have to do this for like the next six months, I'd be like, okay, well, I'll do it. Like, I don't know, you just, you just have, you just get used to it. And it's kind of, yeah, something that I've learned it, to a point that I'm actually quite nervous about going back to the real world because I've had no pressures at all. And it's been really, really nice. I haven't had to think about work or, um, I mean, there's like some money worries and stuff, but I'm okay. Like, I know I'm okay. And there's nothing I can do right now. So there's no point worrying about it right now. I don't know what's going to happen after, but I'll sort it out. Like, I'm lucky enough as well. Like, I have support if I need that. Um, but yeah, like, I'm quite... I don't like going out actually when I go to the shop I don't like it I liked it at the beginning it was like okay once a week I get to go out oh it's sunny today great but I come back and I feel like really weird because it's out of my like comfort it's it's like and it's just weird outside uh, it's really quiet and we've started to have children out now they're allowed to go outside now and it, it's so nice to hear children I haven't heard them for six weeks <laughs> like and just to hear them in the street and it, it's kind of uh, bringing a bit more motivation to like to want to go out again um but yeah it just kind of shows that obviously everyone I feel like this now but tomorrow I might feel different and like we feel different all the time and everyone is taking different experience from it. Um, but that can change and yeah, I'm a bit of a roller coaster, but I'm okay with it. Like I'm, I've kind of accepted that and I've kind of let it go and thought, well, who wouldn't have a roller coaster in this kind of situation, but in any situation really, like in life, like you, you can be up and down. So, people are putting a lot of pressure on themselves to achieve something in, su in yeah, such a unique situation. And also in our regular lives, <laughs> you know, we just kind of like, we need to, oh my God, Katie's right, you know, like planting a garden, I need to plant a garden, and you know, my neighbor's making masks, oh shit, I need to make masks, you know? So there is like this constant dialogue. And were you gonna say something? 
Yeah, it's it's really strange that this is the topic. I didn't. It was Katie just told me about the the call tonight, and because I'll be totally honest, I'm almost ashamed to say it, but I'm really enjoying this time. It's and I think because my whole understanding with the principles that I just I don't worry anymore, and so in the very beginning when this started, I said, "Oh my God!" Like you. Um, I wanted to go out and start helping and volunteering and doing all of this. And um, Katie, I, Katie and Maria, and we had a call yesterday. And Katie wasn't at the beginning of the call, but I had it was explaining how my mum has dementia. And in Ireland, a bit like Will's parents, we do what's cocooning. You have they have really we should be locking people into their homes once they're over seventy or in underlying. Um, condition and I actually have both in my family my mom is 86 she has dementia and my brother has uh, Paul has Down syndrome he's massive ability but he had a kidney transplant four years ago so both of them are in the top category of vulnerability and so when I had the whole thing about volunteering then I said oh my god if I go volunteering for my community then I'm adding extra risk and we have a big family big Catholic Irish family so we're very lucky one of them, five girls, three boys, and but one of my sisters is frontline. She's a she works a nurse and a doctor's GP. So there's actually seven of us going into our two vulnerable family members. So we have to be extremely careful. So that's my big responsibility. The only one I see is that I don't get sick, and we we're very careful about going shopping. So we do nothing else other than going to shop. So that's the only risk. So I was kind of sitting and when people ask me, how are you doing? And I'm almost afraid to say, you know, <laughs> I'm really reveling in all of this. So I went for a cycle with my daughter, Amy, today, and it was so strange. We, on the cycle, we just saw this young guy. He looked like he was late teens, maybe early 20s, walking his dog. And I just looked at him and something hit me there. And then I said, that is why I'm so happy with what I'm doing now. I have no pressure. For the first time in my life since I was, I suppose, 15, it reminded me when I was a young child and I had no pressures. I had nothing to do. I had no commitments other than be part of a family growing up on a farm in the country. And that just hit me today when I saw this young guy walking his dog and I said, my God, the freedom. And that's what it is for me. I see it. Yeah, I don't have income coming in now. But like Amy said, I'm not particularly, or Haley said, I think I'm not particularly worried about that. And I don't know, is it because the whole understanding behind this, for me, the three principles, I, I love every day. I actually, my business was running a guest house. So I had people from all over the world in my house 24 seven for nearly 10 months of the year. And now I can go to bed when I want. I can get up when I want. I can do anything. And sleep, my sleep is fantastic. And we were just talking about sleep and how important it was for the body and for the mind and everything. I was with my mom yesterday um, who needs a lot of assistance and she, like her dementia is like, she doesn't know what she said a minute ago. I had boundless energy yesterday. I just don't know. And, and I have since, and I'm actually thoroughly enjoying the quality time with my mom. She is so much living in the moment. She doesn't know this COVID thing, you know. So that's my experience. And I just, I'm amazed totally. If somebody told me a year ago, this is what I'd go through, I'd say, oh, no way. Absolutely not. So I don't know where, that's my experience. And um, that's where I'm at. Cool. Thank you. Sam, have you been wanting to say something or are you just chilling? Yes. Oh, just chilling and reacting and nodding in agreement. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, great. So, look, the first point we're going to be moving to another point, but the first point is to, oh, Shelley, do you want to say something? I'm sorry, Eva. If there's nothing to say, I, mean, I don't want to pressure you. No, not at all. Just uh, very briefly, it's really interesting listening to everyone talk um, and listening to your story, uh, Gabriella. I can completely relate to that. My, my oldest friend is currently making masks. Um, she's an out of work costume designer and they're really cool. And uh, she's made 2000 since Thursday, which is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so yeah in terms of and that immediately makes you go oh wow I'm really not doing that am I um, but it also made me realize how much I define um, my worth in terms of productivity so to the extent that me and my 11 year old son have a joke at the end of the day he'll say to me how was your day and I'll say mm, moderately productive and that's, it's always moderately productive, but I define my day in terms of how productive I've been, which is, yeah, which is interesting. The trip, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that was, yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. You know, I think we are productive by nature, it seems like. Life, you know, like in little animals and all, which is productive by nature. The only question that we wanted to offer for consideration was, is our worth as a human being really tied in any way to what we do? So picking up on that, uh, we are productive by nature. Uh, there's something really interesting and in hearing all the stories how there's not just one way, right? So everyone is responding to the situation differently. And uh, there's so many internal and external voices suggesting what we should do, right? You should make the most of this time. This is a unique opportunity. Uh, write the book that you always wanted to write or create what you want to always wanted to create or slow down or right like regardless of the message there's like a pressure to make something out of this and when we feel pressure or should when shoots come and we feel that tension it's difficult to listen to that innate intelligence of productivity that we all share so, and there's, and there's a fear of if we don't get into action, then we won't do, achieve anything today. Like for the people that have that worry, some of, some of you don't have that worry. Uh, but like I remember some weeks ago, I was lying in bed and it was 11 a.m. I think it was a Sunday. And I remember thinking, I wonder if I don't put an alarm, would I ever get out of bed? And then I stayed there and I waited. And I had a lot of noise like, oh, you should get on and do this and do that. But I, I ignored all of that. And I stayed in bed. And eventually I was moved to, you know, get out of bed and have a shower and have breakfast. So when we know that there's something else we can rely on, that pressure dissipates. Because we always have that guidance in us and it looks different than good ideas, right? Like good ideas that will say, get an exercise routine or, a, you know, send a newsletter for your business. And what you get is really different from inspiration. Like I was, I was getting things like spend time with your mom, you know, why don't you massage her feet? Uh, have a nap because you're very tired because you're very tired so you always you are as Gabriela was saying we have that innate productivity and we can rely on that always and it's going to be unique for us and it's going to be responsive in the moment so what maybe today for me what I need to do is watch Netflix because I feel anxious but that doesn't, that is not going to work for everyone. And that maybe doesn't work for me tomorrow, right? Tomorrow I'll get something else. So we all have that. Um, and I think that's wonderful to feel, actually, I don't have to do, achieve anything during today or I'm going to send this email. We just know. Does that make sense to you? Can I um, mention, sorry, I know not everybody's spoken, but of course, I, yeah. I'm feeling an incredible amount of pressure from work. 
to um, not just to be productive almost to a competitive point but as though the whole organization is in that space and they've always been very outcome output focused I think that and then the, when this all started they seemed to go on to a little bit of a right guys don't panic you know we're going to look after you we're going to let everybody find their own way and we'll give you time to volunteer and we'll give you time to process and within this last two weeks it's really flipped and now it feels like there's a massive cultural shift towards the opposite of what you're saying and I'm feeling like I'm needing to rebel about against it a little bit but obviously everybody in the organization needs the job and needs to come out of this looking well it's just very interesting hearing the opposite feeling that that I'm feeling more comfortable with that's it mm. Yes, Eva. I think for me, um, it, it becomes a question of um, how mindful we are with our time, because when you talk about worth being attached to what we're doing, um, I'm aware from my own behaviour, and since I recognised it within myself, I see it in other people, that people don't always do things for, um, let's call it, it's more complicated than this, but genuine reasons. People, um, especially maybe in situations like this, do things so that they can say to other people, oh, well, I'm really brilliant because I'm doing this. And th they're doing it for, um, they're not always doing it to genuinely help. They're doing it for the praise that that gets because that, that kind of bolsters their self-worth or, you know, you know whatever. Um, but on the flip side of that, it, it kind of poses the question for me of what do you consider nothing? And this is something that I've been thinking about quite a lot during this time. I am living my best life. I'm on full pay. I'm at home. I'm getting to do all the things that, that, I, that, I, want, that I want to do. But I am being very productive, but it doesn't feel like that because it's things that I enjoy. So I'm reading the books that have been sat there for, for ages and, you know, uh, making crocheting blankets. I've got loads of them. Get your requests in. I've got plenty of time on my hands. Um, but when it comes to nothing, I've had friends of mine who've said to me, oh, I had a nap this today and I felt really bad. And that's not nothing to me. That's listening to your body and responding to what you need. And that's a very mindful and very respectful thing. So when you start to look at things and question whether you're doing things mindfully, then what is doing nothing? What is doing unproductive? Because I've struggled to find an answer to that question in terms of, even if I'm doing what um, might not be massively productive, I am feeding myself and doing what I need, if that, if that makes sense. That's a great, that's a great question. And, and there's such a different feeling, right, between being productive from inspiration and being productive from pressure. I lost you, you froze, froze, frozen. Oh, I'm back. Are you back, Maria? I'm back, yes, I'm back. You were saying something really interesting about the difference the different yeah how different it feels to being productive from inspiration versus being productive from pressure or what could be something that sounds like a good idea i should do this yeah, so you can still and it's great also like what is productive because i consider having a nap really productive right especially given these times where i felt Actually, you're just tired. You just need to stop. I felt that many times. Uh, but I can also relate to Naomi with the pressure of working for an organization and having to produce. And again, can we get things done from that inspired place? And how would that be different from listening to the external or internal pressure? I, 
I, I just like to go back to what you said then, because I realise that some of the pressure that I feel we're under where I am isn't being very productive anyway. So we're getting to do a lot of stuff and but we're going fast to go fast rather than going slow to go fast. Mm. And I do think that's what we want to do. We we've always talked in our organization about being like that. But something seems to have sparked us into a crisis like constant crisis, constant rush. And I don't think we're being even if productive means different things to different people, we, we definitely wouldn't be, be able to crochet a blanket together, let's put it like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, it's really interesting. I, I'm, I'm working full time from home. I'm lucky enough that we're able to keep working. So I'm sort of nine till five, I kind of in a space where I do sort of have to be productive because there are things that need to be done. And I work for a small organization where there's just two of us. And if we were to stop, then we probably wouldn't be able to continue as an organization. But within that, allowing myself that space, if I can't focus that day to actually what you were saying Maria, it's okay for me just to get on the sofa and watch Netflix for that afternoon because actually if I sit at my computer and try and force myself to work all I'm going to do is add to my stress and potentially go down the route of beating yourself up which then of course just makes it all worse mm -hmm. but um one of the things that I've really I'm really benefiting from is the not having to commute into an office to not having to be in town and also the th the things that have also been stripped away say like a social life or this this thing about should this idea that we should be doing this and we should be doing that i'm really quite enjoying having the extra space around say my my productivity productive time having that extra space um I was going to decorate my living room on Sunday and instead I just sat on the sofa. I just allowed it and it's incredible what came up. And I started to, I think, realize the things that are important for me and what I want. And I might not be able to act on those now, but I can certainly act on them in the future. And I don't think that would have happened if I was still traveling to work and maybe going and seeing my friends at the weekend and oh it's a lovely Saturday so I should go out for a walk in the hills all of that stuff I don't think that would have happened I think it's a for me it's been you know I'm, I'm being forced to force I'm I'm being productive in my job still but for me the value side of it has come out in the extra space I have around around that it's like I'm able just to stop and be and you know, and I think there is something what Eva said about being mindful. And I think it is, I don't miss walking around town centre and being with crowded people and it being loud and adverts screaming for my attention and all of this. It's, you, you, it's much more easier just to be present, I think. And I don't know, I've been really benefiting from that. Katie, what do you want to say something? I was just going to, yes, say thank you, Sam, and everyone else who shared. And um, it felt like to pick up on the, the feelings of, that we experience of pressure, whether, whether it's related, our productivity, we feel we need to be productive in work or in any area of our life in contributing to our community or um, decorating the house whichever sphere of life our productivity looks necessary um, I wanted to say something about how we understand where our, the feeling of pressure comes from so it, it can look like it comes from outside of us from 
from the fact that other people are doing X, Y, and Z, or um, from my employer who who is where there's a culture of um, working in a way that looks pressured or working fast or whether it's um, because I'll feel better on a day that I am more productive and it can really look like being productive makes us feel better it can really look like being productive is the answer in a difficult situation um, and it's not really an issue of productivity because as, as Maria pointed to we are innately productive we and as Gabriella said, we, we go through our lives, we can rely on the fact that as human beings, it's, it's part of our nature to be creative and productive and, and, and bring things into being in the world. And the feelings of pressure to do that look like they're created from the outside world. They look like those, there's things coming at us, telling us that we're under pressure to be productive. And the pressure actually is that experience of pressure is coming from our thinking about the necessity of productivity or our thinking about the fact if I don't feel under pressure, there's a problem. So Anne mentioned how she almost felt um, ashamed of not currently feeling under pressure and that she was enjoying the time right now and was reminded of a previous time in her life where she felt free from pressure and how wonderful that is and yet there's shame attached to not experiencing that pressure i don't think you mentioned feeling shame either in relation to um enjoying your time or living your best life um and yet you were talking about all of your productivity so our productivity doesn't rely on pressure, doesn't rely on the feelings of pressure. So wherever we think the feeling of pressure is coming from, outside of us, it's actually coming from inside of us. So I, um, I had a, an interesting journey around feeling under pressure to get more productive, uh, to get more busy today, because it, uh, it, we discovered today that we can't, we're not entitled to furlough. So we're not entitled to, um, so we run two organisations, one's a non-profit and one's a for-profit, and we don't do an awful lot through the for-profit business, but we have a little bit of a salary through that business. And we we furloughed ourselves, so we stopped working through that business and intended to apply for the government grant to support the income that comes from that business during this time, and it turns out we were ineligible for that. So that news came through today, and suddenly I was like, oh no, we kind of made a whole plan around, we're going to be all right because we were getting that support from the government and now we can't. So I experienced pressure. Um, suddenly it felt like I was under financial pressure and the answer to that was to get more productive to get busier do more business through the business that now has to pay us without having the cash in the bank to pay us so as I experienced those feelings of pressure because I thought I needed to produce more money I, I realized so all of the ideas I was coming up with to make money were um, shoulds. They were crowding out my creativity. They were, I was, and I was feeling tighter and tighter and tighter and more and more constricted and more and more pressured by the things that I felt productive. So I got into a vicious cycle of pressure. And it really looked like I was under pressure because money had been taken away from me. It really did look like that. So I, I, I got to a point where I was no longer able to see clearly around this situation and, uh, and I recognised and I needed to release some pressure and step back, so I stopped. I stopped the thinking. I stopped producing the thinking it was creating this pressure and I dropped that mm. 
And a bit like Amy said, I knew I'm, that we'll be okay. So the circumstances had changed. Uh, we weren't going to have the money we thought we were going to have. I experienced pressure because of my thinking around that fact. I stepped away from that. The circumstances were still the same. There was no more money coming in. But I didn't feel the pressure. I knew I could rely on my innate productivity. At some point, at some point, I'll find an answer. It's happened for me before, I can rely on it happening again. And if that answer looks like quitting the businesses and getting a job, that's okay too. So I was released from the pressure of having to do all sorts of things to fix that problem. Did that make any sense? What did you hear? I'd love to, I'd love to know. I think um, obviously you've just sort of gone through that process. I think what I'd like more information on is the point where you stepped away, you changed the thinking. Like, how do we do that? I mean, it's funny listening to people who are saying, oh, I'm not feeling pressured to be productive and thinking, oh, well, it's interesting that you came to this because it's, it doesn't seem relevant to you. But on the other hand, I found it really inspiring listening to people saying, I can do anything. I mean, that, that is such an alien concept. Like it hasn't occurred to me to think, I can do anything I like today. No, it is all should. And even when I'm doing something lovely, like going for a cycle around the park, it is because I have said, I should exercise. I should get outside. It'll be good for my mental health. It'll be good for my physical health. You know, and it's that it's that step of how when we're locked in that negative thinking cycle, how do we go step away and change the thought? <laughs> so uh, I I've got a response to that, and then uh, it, I'd love to hear Maria Gabriella if you have a response to that specific question and want to build on it. Um, so. Yeah, I can see that I might have given the impression that in that, in, in relaying that process of what happened for me around um, feeling, experiencing the pressure, it might have sounded like I kind of did something, like there was a, there was a technique, I was like, oh yeah, I know what to do now that I'm feeling this, I will just meditate. I mean, I do meditate, but not, uh, that's because I enjoy meditation. Uh, but it's not something I do in order to release pressure. I, what I have come to understand is that I can rely upon my innate genius, my innate productivity and creativity. And I know that that feels very different to the experience of pressure. So when I experience pressure, I recognize that I'm not, I'm not coming from my innate creativity and genius and productivity. I'm coming from thinking that I'll find a solution in the bottom of my thinking, that I can work this out and that I have to have the answer. And if I don't have the answer, which puts pressure on me to have the answer, then it's the end of the world. So that, that's 
an experience that feels very pressured. I've come to recognize that I won't have access to my, all of my capacity as a human being there. I have access to that with a calm, still, quiet mind that Sam described when he sat on his sofa and had some realizations about the things that were important for him. Because I know that that's how it works. I know not to pay much, too much attention or listen to the pressured thinking that comes up for me. Could I respond to you, Katie? I found a lot in what you said really important because I'm living in two separate universes and I'm, I am part of a mutual aid voluntary group. And that is not because I want to be seen to be um, helping everybody or being more productive in a way. It's because that speaks to my values more than maybe some of the things in my day job do. And what I've discovered is I don't have to do much because we've got this collective of people and nobody feels like they're in charge and everybody's wanting to just bring what they can in a really honest and open way. And it's been such an antidote. And it's just the way you were describing the way that things seem to come because of our innate abilities to do stuff. It feels more natural and feel that it's happening. And that's been my sort of saving grace through this compared to the other part of my life, I think. But it just reminded me that sort of two ways of doing it practically um, happening to me almost. Anyway, it was very useful. To... Thanks, Naomi. Gabriella, were you keen to come in? Yes, I would love to come in, Katie. <laughs> I'm keen. Uh, <clears throat> this is a good question, Haley. Um, so I have been studying this thing that we're sharing with you since 1996. Okay. I have found it extremely helpful. And I think that I have, you know, the story with the mask just happened last weekend. So I suspect that me and most humans have an experience of life when we feel very uncomfortable thoughts, like stress, like concern, like pressure, like whatever. Um, and we would prefer not to. Around 10 years ago, when I was feeling something that I didn't want to feel, I had a realization. And the realization was, as a human being, you're able to experience all kinds of feelings that are transient, that really cannot hurt you. They feel uncomfortable, they feel intense, but really, because of the nature of who we are and because we're resilient people, they won't hurt me. And it sort of felt like, you know, when you're walking sometimes and there is like a breeze that comes that's very cold, that gets like all the way down to your bones. You're like, oh my God, this is so cold. It feels uncomfortable and then it passes. So I realized today when I experience uncomfortable feelings that are transient and they can't hurt me. And somehow when I realized that, it lost the severity 
of experience when I feel uncomfortable thoughts, when I feel uncomfortable feelings. You know, because I started seeing them as this, this is like a breeze passing through, it's a breeze passing through. I don't have to do anything with it because the nature of it is transient. And it, um, it made uncomfortable feelings less, less scary. It made intense feelings less frightening. Frightening, it just, it did something for me. Because I realized that at the center of my being, that like the center of my being was fine. Although as human beings, we can feel intense discomfort. Trans but, but for periods of time. So that was, that was something about the nature of feelings that I didn't know before. I really thought that feelings, you know, and all the literature that I had read and, you know, I studied psychology. So everything that I had studied pointed to the fact that having certain kind of feelings is something to your core. And so given that, of course, <laughs> you know, it's like, wait, this must be handled and we must build a barrier, you know, and all this stuff, right? And so seeing through that and noticing that there's really not a feeling that can break me, lifted my spirits. So that's what I would, that's what I would have to say. Would you like to add? No pressure. Well, I think you both have answered. Well, actually, Haley, what do you feel? Do you feel that they answered your question? Yeah, I think so. I think um, obviously it's harder some days than others to kind of believe that things are transient and that feelings are transient and that um you know tomorrow it may feel different um i think i think the difficulty for me is i think i've become a bit stuck in this kind of this feeling of lack and especially around this lockdown I mean, like I said, I love the idea of going, oh, I can do anything today. What shall I do today? And then I think, oh, well, probably the first things that pop into my head will be things I can't do because of the lockdown. <laughs> so it's, um, I feel like I really want to sort of change my attitude to it and focus on the, on what I do have and gratitude for that. And, um, and I feel like I'm sort of, I'm, I'm trying, I'm probably trying too hard to sort of change my attitude. I'm kind of desperate for a, a different perspective. Mm. So something occurred to me, Haley, when while you were talking, and I'll share it just in case, is helpful. You know, when you said that you, you wonder what you could do today and you think that maybe you're going to have ideas that of things you have, that you cannot do, right? I think that this, well, I think, no, I know that this innate intelligence is responsive to the moment. So for example, if I open my fridge and I wonder what I could cook today, it's not going to give me a recipe of an ingredient that is not on my fridge. 
right? So you can rely on that, that what will occur to you will be something responsive to your current circumstances. Um, and to this moment, not in a month's time. So I think leaning towards that, I'm being curious about that. Because it's that ordinary, right? It's opening the fridge and wondering what I could cook today. It's, it, it happens constantly. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, yeah. I want to say something. I love that metaphor, Maria, with the refrigerator. I love that. It's a beautiful, beautiful metaphor. And you know, sometimes when you open the refrigerator, you might go like, I, I want to do enchiladas, which you probably don't know what that is, but it's a Mexican dish, right? And then you realize, huh, I don't have tortillas, which is something that you need to make enchiladas, right? Hmm. Oh, what can I make? I can make, I don't know, roasted potatoes, but I don't have rosemary. But eventually, what happens? Haley. Well, I guess eventually you find something that you do have the ingredients for. So because you might have a habit, right? We all have habits, Haley. As you're opening your refrigerator of wisdom, right? And say, okay, what can I cook today, right? You may come up with, well, I cannot, whatever. Well, I cannot, whatever. It's not a big deal. Just get, you know, get settled with that. And just like, you know, at one point you're like, oh, I can make, I don't know, scrambled eggs because I have eggs. That's <laughs> great, right? That's sort of the same thing that happens with this. So there may be a couple of recipes that may come up to your mind that you just don't have all the ingredients for. And so, you know, just kind of like, okay, well, not that. Well, not that. And then as you get settled, more settled, then you'll see the eggs. Oh. Yeah. Good, Katie, I think you wanted to say something. Mm. Thanks, Gabriella. I felt you were gonna add there and I was just about to invite any other questions. Anybody um, curious about anything that has been said by anybody or or if not a question something you'd like to share something you've observed so I guess for me um, when I open my fridge it's really full because my fridge has got the internet in it and the internet is full of all these things that other people are doing that I should be doing for Developing the business, homeschooling my children, nourishing activities for my children, exercise and activities, painting, redecorating, you know, I feel um, pressure and I know it comes from me, but I feel pressure to be doing all of these things and be doing them all well. And you obviously can't do them all at the same time. Um, and you obviously can't do them all. But I've definitely, for the duration, have been feeling very pressured to do as much as I can to make sure that the business is still running at the end of this, that the children still have some form of education, that we're having some family time, that I'm feeding them really well, all, all these things. So that's my, my fridge isn't, my fridge is over full and I feel pressure to try and do all these things with this, you know, this, um, this special time we've been given and to do special stuff as well. That, that's, yeah, that's kind of where, where my pressure is coming from and so yeah again any thoughts on how to relieve that pressure and deal with not being productive in all those different areas that you feel you should be being productive in you know when this whole thing started my husband 
would go to the store every day and <laughs> we have probably a hundred pounds of rice, you know, and I'm not kidding you. And we probably have maybe 200 cans of different kinds of beans, all right? And I went to the store one time during this, the beginning and I just started grabbing stuff and I'm like, what is this? I'm never gonna make this, right? So our pantry is saturated. And it's sort of the same thing, Shelley. It's sort of the same answer as with Haley which is you open up the pantry or the refrigerator and there's so much stuff that you cannot make, you know, pancakes and scramble eggs and the salad, you know, and enchiladas, right? Like, I mean, you could, I guess, but, you know, really not for breakfast, right? So it's sort of the same thing. The habit may be, it may look different, right? but it's just sort of like settling in a little bit, right? So it might occur to you, well, I should, I should like uh, homeschool the kids and I should decorate and then I should paint and I should write a book and I can learn French too, right? Like all of that may come up at the same time. That's kind of similar, although it looks different, but it's kind of a similar thing as Haley saying, well, I cannot do this and I cannot do that and I cannot do that. Right, so there is a settling. That's when Maria, I don't know if you, if you remember Maria talking about acting from inspiration. Do you know how there are some projects that are like really successful, like they're like known around the world? Like this woman with a one million mask project, right? But it's like a beautiful, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful project. But I bet you there are many people trying to emulate something like that. And it's not gonna be as fantastic because it's coming out of a good idea and shoulds. That's the first thing that comes to our mind. Probably for her, it came from inspiration. So there's something about discerning great, good ideas and moving, moving towards action in that versus, you know, like what Sam was saying, he was just like, he was supposed to decorate the living room and he was just like sitting down. And then in the process, his inspiration offered some possibilities. And this is gonna take a little like getting settled in, right? Like when you open the refrigerator and you just have carrots and you have potatoes and you have eggs and you have all this stuff, right? And you're like, whoa, 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 hold on. So then what happens? What happens when you open the refrigerator and you have too much stuff? You don't cook it all at the same time, right? And I know, I think we, Katie, Maria, and I know that this is very different from a lot of uh, messaging out there and maybe the way we were raised or the things that we value. We, we understand that. But it is something very different to act from inspiration. You know, like Eva was saying, you know, with knitting blankets and it doesn't even feel really like hard work. Now, somebody else can be needing a blanket because they think they should. And the qualitative difference is palpable. So if you open the refrigerator and you start pulling everything out, it will have a certain feeling attached to it. Do you know what I'm talking about, Shelley? And then, you know, you might do that. You know, you might get the spinach and the potatoes and the eggs, you know, and everything out, right? And you're like, okay, hold on a second. <laughs> Let me just put some stuff back.
What's resonating for you, Shelly? I love to hear that. What's making sense to you? That uh, the idea of <laughs> pulling everything out and trying to do something with everything. Absolutely. Um, and I feel like, like I say, because I have the internet in my fridge, all you see is people's productivity. Right. And um, you know, I'm getting three emails a week from the chairman of Sainsbury's and every, every single person I've had any contact with uh, ever is doing something and uh, engaging and you know, obviously working on their business. And um, yeah, so you know, sitting down in the morning, trying to set the kids off on some homeschooling, then trying to make a start on the day without getting distracted by all these other things that are going on and thinking, should I be doing that? I, that, I know that feeling, it feels like I've pulled everything out of the fridge and I'm, I'm not even trying to make something, I'm trying to eat it all at once, it's terrible. <laughs> yes, um, so yeah, it's, um, it's, it's like how to shift those habits of mind, which, and it's definitely very should based. Um, mm -hmm. But when you, I guess when you feel overwhelmed, it's like how on earth do you, how on earth do you work out what to work on first yeah. and, and next? And, and I definitely do far too much thinking and not enough, you know, sitting and letting inspiration come. Because I'm so, trying to get through everything. <laughs> okay, so look, it may happen that you might feel overwhelmed mm. or frustrated or you feel pressure, whatever, okay? When you start feeling overwhelmed, that might be like a little red flag for you. I said, okay, you've pulled everything out of the fridge, Shelly. Okay, no guilt, no worries. But it might be like a nice tap on the shoulder of like, okay, hold on. Let me just take a moment. Not to avoid it, right? But it's just like, oh, okay, hold on. Overwhelm, when you feel overwhelmed, when you feel pressure, when I feel stressed or any of those feelings that we feel because we're humans, it's like a little tap on the shoulder, like, huh, maybe I've pulled everything out. So just if you start noticing that, like if you can notice your overwhelm as a barometer, or a thermometer, that will be helpful. So if you have temperature and you took your temperature and it was really hot, what would you do? Take some paracetamol. <laughs> <laughs> you might not go for a run or you might decide to stay home and drink some water or something. So I guess there is something to, when you start understanding that you can use your feeling state to help you. Do you have a temperature? You need to rest. And I also think there's some value in recognizing that even though they are natural and human and it's okay to have them but those feelings of stress and overwhelm actually are not that helpful because they cloud our vision so we don't really can we cannot really see the next step and i you know before um coming across this understanding we are sharing i thought that my feelings of stress were good because it made me driven it made me produce more and now I recognize that actually, when I'm stressed, I'm less productive. So that tap in the shoulder that Gabriela is talking about makes sense like, I'm actually not very productive in this state. I better take a step back. So it's both the thermometer, but also recognizing we don't work, we don't function, we can function because we are going always to function, but maybe not as well as we would like to. So we're approaching half seven and the close of this conversation. Um, 
Yeah. So I'd like to say thank you very much to everyone for joining. Um, um, I don't quite know how to close. Let's see. Um, would anybody like to say any last few words? Okay. I, I would like to say uh, thank you everyone for you know, taking this hour and a half of your time and joining us. And we, we want to be doing this every month. So if there's any topic that you would like us to explore, do send us an email and we can pick that as, as the next topic. Actually, I think we, I believe we have a uh, date for our next gathering. Oh, we do actually, yeah. Ooh. So that will be, you have it there, Katie? Do you want me to look? I do. I have it here. It is Monday the 11th of May. At the same time, so six o'clock. And we'll pull out that we'll uh, let you know about the topic mm -hmm. soon. But if you have any um, interest, do let us know yeah. because we really want to work on it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Awesome women and lovely Sam. Thank you for being here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Brilliant. <laughs>